Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm going to be doing my September wrap up part one. I have a decent amount of stuff to talk about here, partially because I read a lot during Labor Day weekend, which is the first weekend here in the United States, and then the first weekend in September, not just like any first weekend, although that would be fantastic if it was. I've been reading a lot of like shorter books recently just because that's what my brain is moving towards at the moment. So the first book I finished was The Incendiaries by R.O. Kwan. This is a relatively new literary fiction book. So in this story you are mainly following these two characters named Will and Phoebe. Most of the story is told through Will's point of view although you do get some from Phoebe's point of view as well. They are both attending this unnamed, I think it's unnamed, elite university. Will comes from a relatively conservative background. He grew up as a Christian and went to a Christian college and then he ends up transferring out of the college and going to this university and he has basically like abandoned his faith. Phoebe on the other hand seems to have come to college and doesn't really have a strong pull to any religion but she ends up falling into this slightly more religious group that as you're learning about them may or may not be a cult. From the very beginning of the story you find out that Will thinks that Phoebe and this group are a part of this bombing that takes place near campus and so it's about Will sort of exploring what happened between them and sort of how Phoebe fell into this and whether or not they were involved in this bombing. So this is a relatively short book. It's not even 250 pages long. I feel like this is like an interesting concept and parts of the story are really just like good explorations of what it's like to have faith and then lose your faith or to not have faith and then to gain faith in something. But it's just really short so it feels like the exploration isn't deep enough. The way that this book is written feels very, I don't want to say superficial, but it doesn't feel grounded at all. And it's possible that that's done on purpose because this story is framed as Will looking back on events that have happened and so you know, the way memories work and whatnot. Like you don't have very concrete memories very often, especially when you are looking at an event and trying to figure out what happened. So it might be purposefully written in that way, but I feel like because it's not very concrete, it was hard to strongly connect or feel anything about these characters. There is a lot in here that sort of touches upon things like privilege, especially when you're someone who attends an elite university and Will is someone who comes from a relatively poor background. Like there's a lot of discussions about him like working multiple jobs to be able to pay for his tuition and things like that and there's like some interesting sort of contrasts happening there but that sort of gets dropped as the story continues and it all just feels just a little bit wishy-washy. So yeah I gave it a three out of five stars because it's not terrible by any means and again I really like the ideas that are brought up but I just felt like it wasn't enough for me personally. Possibly if it was longer, possibly if it had gone in a different direction I would have liked the story a lot more but I just think this wasn't really the book I tend to really really love because again it's just so short that it didn't have enough time to really flesh out a lot of these details but again if you're interested in the story I feel like there's no harm in picking it up it's a good book but it's not a great book. Next up I picked up The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. I got this as an audiobook from the library and so got it like right before like a day or two before Labor Day weekend started so I decided that would be a good one to listen to over the weekend and this was cute. I gave this one a three out of five stars as well. I realized that I really enjoy sort of the forced to be in a relationship <laughs> uh, fake romance trope. I actually talked about this over at the Book Riot channel like between The Wedding Date and To All the Boys I Loved Before. I was like oh that's a thing I really enjoy seeing but that doesn't last very long like one of the things I liked about this book is that these are characters who recognize that they are attracted to each other and so they start to pursue something. I should probably give you some sort of like synopsis about this book that would probably be helpful. So in this story you are following these characters Alexa and Drew and they end up getting stuck in an elevator together for a little bit in this hotel that Drew is staying in and Alexa is there to visit her sister. So they hit it off in the elevator and Drew sort of throws out this crazy idea that she accompany him as his date to this wedding that he's attending this weekend. It is the wedding between like his best friend and his ex-girlfriend and so he's just like I need someone with me. He was supposed to have a date to the wedding but then the date had to bail out for reasons and so Alexa just decides to agree and go for it and they end up having a really great time and they decide to just sort of continue seeing each other. However, the problem is that 
Alexa lives in San Francisco and Drew lives in LA. Drew is a pediatrician and Alexa is like the chief of staff for the San Francisco mayor. So they are both people with like very busy schedules and very important jobs. And so it's about them figuring out what this relationship is and what it means and also like what it looks like when like two people with a significant amount of commitments and things like that are trying to make a relationship work long distance as well. So yeah, like I said, it's a cute book. There's a lot in here that I like. It's an interracial relationship. Alexa is black, Drew is white, and a lot of times they don't like harp on it, but they definitely like mention things about privilege and experiences and things like that. I think that if you are someone who just enjoys rom-coms in general, you'll probably like this book as well. You know, it's sweet. It's a little bit steamy. It's, you know, swoon worthy. I think that if you just enjoy romances, this is definitely one that you should put on your list. I'm definitely glad that I read it and I will be picking up her next book, which I think comes out later this year, I want to say. I'm actually not sure about that. But yeah, this is just cute, fun, fluff romance that I like to pick up apparently now more often. <laughs> All right, the next book that I read was The Vanderbeekers of 141st Street by Karina Yan Glazer. Um, now, Karina has been a, or still is a contributor over at Book Riot and so a lot of people were really excited when this book was coming out and then it got picked up by Amy Poehler's production company for a TV series so yeah I had this on my radar as a middle grade book to read but I saw that it was available at my library as an ebook so I decided to just grab it because I knew it would be a good fun light read for the weekend and I liked it but I didn't love it quite as much as other people do. So in this story you are following this family called the Vanderbeekers and they live in this brownstone and they find out like right before Christmas that they are going to have to move from their brownstone which they've lived in for basically as long as the kids have been alive. The landlord doesn't really seem to like this family very much and so the kids make it their mission to try to be nice to him and to try to convince him that they should be able to stay in the brownstone. So yeah, it's pretty like stereotypical and like standard in my opinion. There's nothing really that surprising that happens in this book, but it's like light and heartwarming sort of situation. The one problem that I did have is that in this family there are five children. I had such a hard time telling these kids apart. Um, I feel like there were too many children in this family or for this story to really work. Like there are two older girls who are twins, there's one boy, and like the other two kids kept mixing them up. So yeah, I feel like the number of family members should have been pared down significantly and then it would have been a little bit of a stronger book but that might just be me. I don't read a lot of middle grade so I feel like I don't have the best basis for what middle grade is but there are some really great like art and illustrations in the book. Obviously I got it as an ebook so I'm sure it would look even better in a physical copy of the book but just even what was included like they have images of the brownstone and they had like little diagrams showing like the fire escape and different things about the house and the building itself. But yeah it's I just felt like it was very clear w what was happening with this story and so nothing really surprised me. So yeah, I read it like really quickly because again it's a middle grade novel so I feel like this would work really well if you just want something fast and heartwarming but it didn't really blow my socks off. All right, next up I read All Systems Red by Martha Wells. This is the first novella in the Murderbot Diaries. This is a novella series that I feel like I have been seeing all over booktube and I feel like everyone I know who has read this series really really enjoyed it. So I saw that it was again available as an ebook from my library and so I decided to pick it up and I really enjoyed it too. You guys are probably well aware of the fact that I don't read a significant amount of science fiction so take this with whatever grain of salt you like although you should probably take everything that I say with some grain of salt but I found this to be just like really fun and interesting. So in this story you are following this like self-aware AI. It's a security unit which is shortened to sec unit and it has named itself Murderbot and it has somehow like hacked its own system so that way it doesn't have to just solely follow orders from the government anymore. It basically decides to download a bunch of soap operas and TV shows and all it wants to do is watch these hundreds of hours of television. It doesn't want to interact with humans or deal with humans or anything along those lines. And so in this first novella, Murderbot is basically forced to be the security for this crew of scientists and the scientists are very like wary of it uh, for reasons and then events occur and Murderbot grows as an AI. So yeah, this is just again really really fun. Martha Wells just explores some really interesting things through Murderbot and 
like aspects of being a human and being like in relationships like friendships and partnerships and working with other people and things like that and is able to just have a lot of fun with those ideas and those sort of situations with Murderbot. Yeah, I really like Murderbot as a character. It's really weird referring to a character as Murderbot. <laughs> But again, it's just really, really charming. I think that if you are someone who read like A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet and you want more of that sort of like heartwarming science fiction, this is sort of like a great next step or next science fiction book to read. I have already downloaded books or novellas two and three from the library because they were available and plan on continuing on with this uh, series through the rest of this month because yeah, Murderbot is just really, really delightful. So yeah, I highly recommend it. Again, it's a novella, so it doesn't take very long to read and it's very heartwarming, which apparently is the theme I've been going for this month and I didn't even realize it until now. All right, next, the only physical book that I've read so far this month, which is terrible for my physical TBR. Um, I, and this isn't even from there. It's Two Dark Reigns by Kendra Blake. This is the next book in the Three Dark Crown series. I adore this series. It's a young adult fantasy series. And again, this is the third book, so I can't really talk about what happens in the plot. So I'm just going to say that I really enjoyed it. I gave four out of five stars because Again, I just really enjoyed this series. I really like the sisters. This is a very slow paced, character specific, character focused uh, sort of fantasy story. So I know a lot of people who don't like this series a lot because they're like, this is really boring. It's super stretched out. Nothing happens. And yes, it does feel like that. Although I will say plot really picks up in books two and three. But yeah, if you read book one and you enjoyed it and you haven't continued on with the series, I don't know why you wouldn't, but I think that the series is going in a really interesting direction. And I'm very excited to see what happens in book four, even though book four isn't coming out until like next year or something. So yeah, I personally am still really, really enjoying the series a lot. It's dark, but not like too dark. And again, it's like character focus and things like that. And even though I always start these books feeling like I need a refresher on the series, every time I start these books, I feel like I fall into the world so, so easily. And even though it may take me a little bit to remember all of the characters and relationships, because there are a lot of characters and a lot of different relationships, I feel like I end up picking it up pretty well. So yeah, I really enjoy it. And also I just love these covers a whole lot. So yes, I bought this like the week it came out and read it immediately and just continue to really really enjoy it. All right and the final book that I have finished so far this month is One and Only by Jenny Holiday. This is the first book in the Bridesmaids Behaving Badly series. So yes another romance novel. This is one that I read partially because I was on hold for it at the library as an ebook and the hold was about to expire so I decided to just read it but also it was kind of what my brain needed this week. This is one I put on hold at the library because I was asking other book writers specifically people who I know read a significant amount of romance about romance novels where the main female character has like a job and is like their own independent person because those are the types of romance novels I like to read and this is one that was recommended to me. So in this story you are following these two characters named Jane and Cameron. Jane is a writer and she writes like middle grade young adult fantasy books and she is the bridesmaid in her best friend's wedding and she basically gets the assignment of babysitting the groom's brother because he is like a troublemaker and whatnot and so her job is to make sure he doesn't get into trouble in these weeks leading up to the wedding. And Cameron was a part of the army and then got discharged. He recently broke up with his girlfriend and all of this stuff and so it's about the two of them or first budding heads and then you know obviously falling for each other and happily ever after. So yeah again cute story. This one a little bit badly written. Um, not the best writing I've read so far <laughs> in a romance novel. But again, cute, fluffy sort of reading. A little bit of steamy scenes if that's a thing you're into or if it's a thing you're not into. I It's easy to flip past them. I'll be probably continuing on with the series. There's a second book I know for sure that just came out. And yeah, I feel like I'm terrible at talking about romance books because this is another one where it's like cute and fluffy and uh, very, you know, predictable. But again, it just felt like exactly what my brain wanted to read, even though it's not like the best written story. My brain was super into it more than the other things I was trying to read this week. So yeah, again, if you like romance stories, if you like that sort of like tension in the beginning where the characters don't like each other at first, then I think that this is a cute one to pick up. But yeah, again, if you're looking for cute, light, fluffy romance, then 
this is another one that you can put on your list. All right, so that's everything that I have read so far this month. I'm currently in the middle of A Gentleman's Murder by Christopher Huang. I'm about halfway through this book. This one's been pretty slow going because again, my brain hasn't been sticking to books very well and it's not the book. I can tell that for sure. So that's why I'm like continuing on with it. Uh, but I basically like put this one down for a couple of days to read that one and only. But yeah, I'm picking this one back up and I'm hoping to get through it like by the end of the weekend at the latest. And then I also started reading the second uh, Murderbot novella. I can't remember what the name of it is off the top of my head, but I will insert a picture here. That one I started reading mostly because I forgot A Gentleman's Murder at work one day this week and I needed something to read while on my commute. Uh, so I just had that one available and so I decided I would just start it. So far so good. I'm only like 20% in the story literally just started. But yeah, like I said, I will be continuing on with the second and third book through the rest of this month too. So yeah, let me know down below what you guys have been reading lately or if you have read any of the books that I mentioned here or if you have any questions about anything that I talked about or if you have any other romance novels suggestions. I like contemporary romances so feel free to send them my way because that's clearly what my brain wants these days. So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.